Today we are starting for the second time the construction of the SWAN, HMS SWAN class and I am going to be building the HMS Thorn um, which is one of the British ships that invaded Trinidad in the year 1797 to overthrow the Spanish and again it's one of the ships that my ancestor Chevalier de Verte um, may have been on. Um, so it's part of the history of Trinidad and Tobago. And of course these wonderful books written by David form the basis of, of this build. I had actually started this I think it's about four years ago and quickly ran into a a skill problem. Um, I, I simply didn't have the skills and I was wasting the wood and so I decided to stop. I built two models since then, the Bellona and recently the Granado and now feel that I am competent enough to uh, uh, to build this wonderful ship. Just as a background, I actually visited the National Maritime Museum and bought all of the plans that I could buy at the time um, and I have them on my, my drawing board. Um, I have all, all the books, um, I'm waiting on the updates which I hope to get in the next month um, and to reacquaint myself of course I had to start back reading from scratch um, because some of the things that would have been said I would have forgotten. My clean working space, which has uh, an architectural drawing board. More than anything else, it's a great place to put the plans down and to take very accurate measurements. Um, These are the plans that I bought um, while at the National Maritime Museum in London. Um, the, most of them are of the fly. Um, these are two drawings that show the internal layout of the fly with some deck beams. And then we start getting really the proper plans that you most commonly find. And perhaps the treasure of, of all the plans is this particular one, which has the side decorations on it. Um, and it's going to be very useful in the thorn. I'm going to follow this practice. The only reference to the thorn that I found so far is this, which is the rib layout, and a number of boats are included. So I'm lucky that I'm starting the build with the building board already complete. Um, the keel has been laid, and in fact, the first section of the bow has also been complete. I've double checked all the measurements, and everything seems fine. Some minor little touching up and cleaning up, but all in all, um, I stopped at the right time. I had purchased the stock to build this boat oh, many years ago from Modeler's Boatyard, I believe. And so it's here and I'm just taking out the pieces. It's taken me three or four days to get back into the thick of things. Um, I found my old French ruler they be the key to draw those very difficult lines actually on the wood. We're going to use the Proxon bandsaw to cut all the parts out. Here we go. So we've got the first piece cut out and I've just rough cut the second piece which fits on it and you can see I have a lot of work to do there and I'll put a piece of sandpaper on this and use this to, to get the, the join perfect between the two pieces of wood. I had bought this sand a few years ago and it turned out to be really a good investment. And you have lots of um, curves to do both inside and outside. It's very good at doing that. Using the drill press, we have been able to um, 
create the dowel points and uh, drill them in. It took us four attempts, but um, and four four pieces had to be recut, but we finally got everything perfectly lined up. So now we can go ahead and stick this in. The um, to get the steps uh, for the first set of uh, frames, we simply took a caliper and um, and transcribe them on no carbon was used no paper we literally went to the drawing drawing board these are all straight um, 90 degree lines from the base so it was really not hard to transfer all the lines very accurately onto the onto the piece that had been stuck the shear line milling machine is certainly going to be a key tool in this build i was Quite an easy job, much easier than I thought, particularly using this um, this table, which helps you when you're coming close to the lines um, that you just have one wheel to turn rather than two if you're using the other side. And of course, as soon as you need to start cutting these um, the steps out, you need to get your chisels. And guess what that means? It means you need to sharp all your chisels. You who have Sorry. know me on video land know that I'm a tool pyong. So these are some absolutely wonderful Japanese knives that I got from Lee Valley, and the Veritas chisels, which are really the finest chisels I've come across. I can't remember where I got these from. They are less expensive. Um, but they also work fine. And then some very small hand tools. Again, I think these came from Lee Valley. When you use the shell line um, to take off the excess waste, it makes the job very easy um, because it's only where you get close to the various steps that you need to to bring the chisel into play. Um, this would be a very difficult job if we were trying to do to take the make the entire surface level using chisels. So it's I'm really appreciative that I have the um, the Shuline milling machine to help with this task. The, the biggest challenge um, with this build is going to be to try and get the measurements as accurate as possible. I use this uh, digital uh, veneer caliper because uh, it gives me all sorts of options in terms of metric imperial and in terms of imperial which is what we're using on this build um, gives me percentages of an inch. So I was able to work out the various percentages that the inches make and work them out very precisely. And then together with this knife, I can mark fairly accurately what the measurements are. Um, so I, I would put a, a very fine line and use a pencil to mark that line afterwards because some of the lead will get into it and then clean it off. Instead of using the, um, the saw to cut the taper. I actually drew the lines on the edge, uh, the back edge of the taper on both sides. 
and then used the uh, rotating sander um, to take it down and then use sandpaper to take it down from there. And as a result, I was able to get literally within um, 0.204 instead of 0.208. And just a, a final note, when you are sanding to get a dimension of a piece of wood and you're taking it down on both sides, the old technique of sanding and counting um, helps tremendously. Um, I tend to either do tens or twenties on one side and then flip it over and do the same amount on the other side. And that's resulted in an absolutely fair taper um, in this case. I'm going to try and keep the videos down to about 10 minutes um, because I have trouble posting them on Vimeo if they tend to get above that. Um, so uh, this is a series of many more videos to come um, and they'll be posted as and when they are finished.